Alright fellas, I am back with another Wi-Fi battle. In this battle, my opponent is going to be Robbie Kazi once again, and this is going to be another OU battle. And I'm going to be using a team that I've used in the past that's actually put in quite the amount of work. I'll, um, there's a couple people that can actually testify to this team, but um, he I wasn't able to showcase any of them prior to this battle just because the freaking patches decided to be a little bit rigorous and as a result now I don't have them anymore so yeah but I am gonna try it against Robbie Kazi here and yeah we're gonna see how it goes so he's gonna lead off with the Barbara which is the the Ferrothorn I'm gonna lead off with Tapu Lele and here I'm gonna go straight for the hidden power fire because for one thing, I actually thought I could actually one-shot this this Ferrothorn, and on the off chance that I was able uh, not able to KO it, I was actually thinking maybe he'd try to go for hazards, and he did. But since it went for hazards, I decided to switch out, and for some reason I switched into Crobat, which in retrospect it's actually kind of a misplay, not a huge one, because not only do I take a Gyro Ball to the face, I get critted, and now my Crobat is now completely weakened. Had I switched in Arcanine initially instead of Crobat, I probably would have been able to take that crit Gyro Ball, but what are you going to do? I don't even know why I did that in the first place. But anyways, now I switch into Arcanine, and he goes for another Gyro Ball, and I'm like, okay. What I'm going to do here is go straight for the Flare Blitz. He, re he reveals Protect, and when I saw this, I was actually thinking, should I double switch? It's thinking he tried to preserve the Ferrothorn, but... Here, ultimately, I just decided, you know what, nah, screw it. Let's just go for another Flare Blitz. And he does stay in, and I actually do get to take out this, um, Barbara, which is the Ferrothorn. And then here, I'm gonna take Iron Bars and Rocky Helmet damage, which is annoying. And then here, I think here he goes into Landris T. If not Landris T, oh no, never mind. He actually goes into Starmie, which is just about as good of a matchup as the Landris in my opinion. So I'm forced to switch out. I go into Swampert. And the first thing, I don't know why, but the first thing I try to do here is actually get the rocks up. Like I said, I'm not really sure why, but I do. And this thing is just going to go for Scald, and I do get burned, unfortunately. But at the same time, it's not a really big deal to me, honestly, just because... I usually only use Swamper for Stealth Rocks anyways. But um here I think I um try to go for a roar just to phase it out because honestly I didn't want to deal with this um star me. I knew he was gonna rapid spin just cause why wouldn't he? So I just roared him anyways because I don't wanna uh switch into a scald so I phase him out. And plus my Swampert's already burned, so why not? But unfortunately, I do phase him into Aladdin, which is the Mega Meta Champ here. And here I decided to sack the, what's it called? The, the Swampert, and he goes for Fake Out. And then here, um, after this, um, he goes for High Jump Kick. And I lose Swampert as a result. Here I'm going to go into Crobat just to scare him out, making him think I'm going to go for a one last ditch Brave Bird, but I don't. What I do here is actually get rid of the spikes by going for Defog. That way I can actually um, switch in the rest of my Mons without taking any prior hazard damage. Because everything but this Crobat on my team actually gets affected by spikes, so decided to get rid of them. Here I hard switch in the Arcanine just to get the Intimidate off. And I take a Stone Edge, which does suck, but what are you going to do? Here, I think I just go for Toxic in case he tries to go for something other than Earthquake or Stone Edge. Like, basically not an attacking move. But here, he's actually going to go for the Stealth Rocks, and I'm just going to go for the Toxic. Just because if I can, if this thing stays in for too long, it, the, the Poison's going to eventually rack up, and he's going to be forced to switch. So, here... I think here I just stay in because I don't have switch-ins to an Earthquake anyway, now that I lost Crobat. 
And not to mention, he got the rocks up, so now I can't even send Incrobat just to take an attack, basically. So I just let Arcanine go down right here. This thing is going to take more poison damage, which is good. I go into Sharpedo. And I do stay in just to protect, because I am... I wasn't sure if Waterfall would be able to KO the Landers from where it's at with just regular Sharpedo. And I also didn't want to risk this thing living so that then he can U-turn. And then I'd be losing Sharpedo in the process. So I did go for Protect here. He does predict that and he goes into Top of Coco. And then here I switch out because I don't want Sharpedo to go down yet because I feel like that thing is my win condition. So what I do here is decide to sack Crobat due to the rocks that were already up. So and he go, um, here I get a free switch into Tapu Lele, just to get the Psychic Terrain up and take out this Electric Terrain that can possibly boost the power of Thunderbolt, which I have no switch-ins for anymore, by the way. So here I'm just going to go for Psyshock. I thought he would switch out to try to get the Electric Terrain back, but he doesn't do that, so he just loses Tapu Koko right there. I do live a Thunderbolt, and now he's going to go into Aubrey, which is this thing. Um... Here he's going to air slash. I thought this thing would actually be a thunder waving variety of a Togekiss, but it's not. It actually is a scarf one, which is crazy. I don't get flinched, thankfully. So I do get to one-shot this thing with a Psy Shark 2, which is actually crazy, because damn, Tapu Lele is putting in work right now. Here he goes into Mega Medicham, and then he switches out for some reason. And goes into Starmie now. It's just going to take a Psy Shark to the face once again. And while resisted, it still does over half. But here, my guess is that he's going to actually just try to finish off my Tapu Lele before it does any more damage, so... He does take out my Tapu Lele with Starmie. And then here, what I do is actually send in Magearna. And with this Magearna, I felt like this was the ideal opportunity for me to set up a shift gear and just late game sweep this entire guy's team. Because that's kind of what Magearna does. At least mine does. But surprisingly, he actually carries Thunder Wave on this Starmie, which is like, what the... When on earth have Starmies carried Thunder Wave? I don't think I've ever seen one with Thunder Wave, honestly. But yeah, I just go for the shift gear right here. And... Um, I think I plan to go for another one because since I got Thunder Wave, I figure if I can get one more shift gear up, that can cancel out at least the speed drop, and then I just have to rely on not getting paralyzed. He is going to hard switch knowing that I am par um, paralyzed right now, but I do pr um, predict some kind of switch. And just go for the shift gear again. Just to get to... I don't know how much the Thunder Wave reduces in speed. I'm going to assume that it that with the shift gear that I got right now, it, I get plus 2 again. So, with this now I'm able to outspeed the Landris and I just go for the Ferium Z move. Twinkle Tackle, there we go. And I'm just gonna destroy this Landris T now. Which is really, really good because I was really afraid of this thing um, being able to take a hit from Sharpedo if I happen to lose Magirna. So I'm glad I didn't get paralyzed when I needed to hit that um, Z move. Now he's going to go into Aladdin, just go for Fake Out on my Magirna. Just to get some prior damage. But um, it's not going to really do much. I still outspeed it and I do go for Flurkin. And I just take out the Aladdin. Honestly, I think had he gone for the Starmie first, maybe he would have been able to... Or maybe he would have been able to take out Magearna, I don't even know. But he now goes into his last Pokemon, which is Starmie. And I think here I just try to go for Flash Cannons. Because I don't want to um, risk Floor Cannon not KOing, and then this thing will be recovering as I keep trying to Floor Cannon it. And I'm just going to get my special attack down every time I go for it, so... Here I just go for flash cannons just to see if I can maybe um, do some damage and if not maybe get the special defense drop so I can do more damage and then confidently go for flare cannon. But seeing how he's about to kill me with scald, I decided you know what, I'll go for flare cannon right here. But I do get paralyzed so as a result this thing now just gets to go for recover. But since he's at full HP now I feel like you know what maybe he's not going to want to attack so. I'll just go for Floor Cannon here, and he probably won't um, try to recover. I get paralyzed again, which is not a big deal, but um, he goes for recover again, so he doesn't even finish off my Magearna. 
So I just get to get a free um, floor cannon off right here. And then I get to go down to Skald. Which was what I was hoping for. Because now um, I can just send in Sharpedo safely and I can protect for free basically because if he goes for recover, I'm still it's still gonna be in range where I can actually take it out with a crunch anyway, so yeah. Um and then I just finish it off with a crunch right here, and that's gonna be the whole game basically. So yeah, that's gonna be a good game to Robbie Kazi. This is actually the closest battle that I've had with Robbie Kazi. Um because usually most of them are usually either 3-0s or 4-0s. Whether he beats me or I beat him, but a lot of them are actually very, very one-dimensional. And this is one of the ones that were actually close. And this one, like I said, it's the closest one that I've had with him. So, yeah. It's very, very commendable in my opinion. That someone like Ravi, who's said to not actually be a competitive battler, he actually considers himself to be more of a casual battler. Which, is, if that's the case, then holy cranberries, you gotta give him credit because he actually can definitely hold on, hold his own in battles against. I'm not saying I'm competitive. In fact, I consider myself to be more in the middle, semi-competitive, semi-casual. Well, that's kind of why a lot of my teams come off as competitive, but they always still come off weird because I, I usually make the teams. But either way, yeah, good game to Robbie Kazi once again. And thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. So, yeah, take it easy.